Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bitstream. Today, we will be taking this keyboard and converting it to Dvorak. Let's take a look. If you are unfamiliar with what Dvorak is, we can see the difference right here between these two images. The top one is a QWERTY keyboard. It's the one that you're probably used to. And you can tell because it says Q-W-E-R-T-Y here on the top left. The Dvorak keyboard, on the other hand, as you can see, has a very different keyboard layout. Now, why would we have a different keyboard layout when we're already used to the one we have? Well, the reason is, is because the Dvorak keyboard was designed to be more efficient. I encourage you to take a look at this video, somewhere around here, and this will explain a lot better than I can on the history of Dvorak and what the Dvorak keyboard layout is. But make sure afterwards to come back to this video. To convert the keyboard over, we will have to take out the main keys and replace them as dictated by the Dvorak keyboard layout. The first thing we'll have to do is look up online the keyboard layout so that we can match it with our physical keyboard. So here I am going into Chrome, and as you can see, I've already pulled it up, but it's as simple as just looking up Dvorak keyboard layout in Google and going to images. Step one is to remove these screws on the back so that we can take out each key. Okay, so from this point, we take the back off, and for those of you who have never seen the inside of a keyboard before, this is what is there. So we have the keyboard here, and each individual key pushes up and pushes down on these rubber pads, which, if we remove this, makes a connection between these very thin films. And then it goes to the circuit board and tells the computer what key what has been pressed. So what we're focused on right now is this part right here we're gonna have to take out these keys and put in the new ones. And now comes the placing. Okay, so apparently we have a slight hiccup here. Um, the U key is supposed to go here, although one thing I've noticed is that, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are tiny grooves. Now, all of the grooves are at the top, going downward. Now this is to help the orientation of the key. Although, for these two keys right here, they are on the opposite side. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, and so I'm getting the same problem here, where it has the notch on the wrong side, because this is what used to go here. Okay, so I have these four left, and as I said, they have the groove problem. What I am going to do is put them in upside down, and the reason for that is because, well, the groove will line up. Now, obviously this looks pretty bad, and I may take care of this later, but for now, you know what? I just wanted a Dvorak keyboard, so that's what we're going to do. There we go. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, now for putting it back together. Beauty shot time. The moment you've all been waiting for. As some of you might have guessed, changing the physical location of the keys does nothing on the software side. So let's take a look. To go about changing to a Dvorak layout, we'll first have to click the Windows key and type in language. So region and language settings, that's where you want to go. Click enter. And here you'll see the languages that are on your computer. And so for now, we're going to focus on the English one. Click options. And then here, there's your keyboards that you have. So I'm going to say add a keyboard. 
And then if we look down this list, near the top you'll see United States Dvorak. And there we go, so it's there. Now it doesn't automatically change because it doesn't know which keyboard to look for when you're typing. So you'll have to change it on your computer whenever you want to switch. And it's actually very easy. If you look down at the bottom right corner here, you'll see it says ENG for English. If you click here, you'll see the different keyboards you have installed. And so to change it, I can just click United States Dvorak Keyboard. There is actually a shortcut for those who don't want to change it with the mouse every time. If you click the Windows key and spacebar, you'll see that it brings it up. And if you just hit spacebar while still holding down the Windows key, you'll see that it switches through. And so by default, if you just hit Windows space, it switches to the next one in the list. And so if you only have English and Dvorak, then it'll just seamlessly switch between the two. And so if I try to type in a QWERTY style, you'll see that, whoa, that did not come out right. But if I go onto the Dvorak keyboard that I just made and I follow the lettering scheme, there we go. Hello world. Now I am not very good at Dvorak at this point because I haven't tried learning it before, but now that I have a Dvorak keyboard, let's see where it goes. If you're on a Mac, you're going to want to go to System Preferences, click on Keyboard, Input Sources, and then here you can see the keyboards that you have installed. And so I can click the plus here, and then right here you'll see Dvorak under English. Click Add, and then from there the keyboard is now added, and you can see right here, make sure this is checkmarked, show input menu in menu bar. What that is saying is that right here with that little American flag, you can change it to the Dvorak keyboard with the mouse. Now, if you don't want to use the mouse, just like Windows, there is a keyboard shortcut. So you click on shortcuts here and input sources. And here you can check mark these options. Select the previous input source and the next input source. So the source that it's talking about is, is the keyboard layout. And so for me, I want to I want both of those. Um, which if you only have two, you only really need one of those options selected because it'll just cycle through them. But you can change the the combination of keys to change it, which I will do right now. So here I will click on command space and I will disable the spotlight search because I never use it. Switching the physical keys on the Dvorak keyboard is actually mostly just for learning purposes because once you actually memorize it and have it within muscle memory it is better just to stick with a QWERTY physical layout but then in software change it to the Dvorak style. For those of you following along at home, obviously this keyboard was not perfect for changing to a Dvorak because it had weird spacing and its angles were just not made to be changed. But there are keyboards that do work for this, and so I encourage you to try it out and experiment. Just don't break anything. I'm not responsible if you break anything. Thanks everyone for watching. If you liked this video, give it a good thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a good thumbs down. If you want to say anything to anyone in the world ever, put it in the comments below. And I'll see you next time. Oh wait, remember, subscribe.